Hey there, and welcome to another Fluent English Conversation, the podcast where I talk about a different subject every week so you can improve your English and listen to some natural spoken conversation. Before we get started, don't forget to download your free transcript from the link in the description so you can make notes and study along with me while I'm speaking. Today, I wanted to talk about a question which a student asked me recently, which I found really interesting and I'd never really thought about before. And the question was, does it matter? And specifically, this question was talking about a tense that I was trying to teach them. They'd used a particular phrase with me and then I corrected them and told them they had to use a specific tense. They had to use past perfect, in fact. And they basically just said to me, oh, but does it matter? Do I need to use that? Can't I just say something else? And it got me thinking about why it's so important to learn grammar properly. In the simplest terms, grammar is the structure you use to put ideas together so it's clear and understandable for other people. And that's what you learn at the beginning so that people actually understand what you're trying to say. But there's a certain point then where grammar actually takes on a different meaning where it's adding a lot more detail and it's referring to things that maybe are unspoken or not so clear. And it doesn't necessarily add extra information or make it more understandable than using an incorrect way. So I can understand the student was querying it and saying, you know, why do I need to bother learning this? It's taking a lot of time. It doesn't really make sense to me. The answer I gave and the answer I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about, in reality, in terms of understanding, if your only goal is for the person to understand what you're saying, then no, it doesn't matter. And this is from my perspective on grammar, specifically tenses, but grammar in general, is I like to focus on how we use it. So also there will be certain cases where maybe a textbook will say you have to say it in a very specific way. But as a native speaker, if I hear lots of native speakers generally using it in a slightly different way, that way I would also consider acceptable because I believe that most people who are learning English are trying to learn it the way that native speakers do and trying to make students students reach a level which is higher than most native speakers doesn't really make sense to me because it's already difficult enough to learn English. So why why do I want to try and set the bar even higher than, for example, like my friends and family would have? It just doesn't really make sense to me. But that's my personal opinion about grammar and also why when I'm studying languages, I tend not to focus specifically on learning tons and tons of grammar until it stops me from communicating or understanding what's going on. So I use it to solve a problem rather than studying it just for the sake of it. However, the reason I do think it's important to actually study all of this stuff, to learn the correct words, to not use verbs incorrectly, all of that stuff, is because of the impression it gives of you and of your English. Let me give you an example. As an English teacher and a native speaker, if I mispronounce a word, so we focus on I make a mistake with pronunciation, all of my other abilities and skills will disguise that so it doesn't really make the other person feel uncomfortable or it makes it more difficult for them to understand what I'm saying or anything like that. I kind of mask it with all of my other abilities and skills. In the same way, if I use the wrong tense, people understand me and because my fluidity, my intonation, the vocabulary I'm choosing is accurate, that then goes under the radar. No one really notices that. Whereas as a student, you don't have those really high level skills in all areas to disguise those smaller mistakes. And what actually happens is the reverse. If you're making little mistakes with grammar, little mistakes with pronunciation, little mistakes with the vocabulary, all of those will go together to make a much more negative impression of your English. And I don't want to use negative in the terms that people are going to think your English is bad. That's not what I'm trying to say. Let's imagine that you are a C1 English speaker. OK, so your English speaking skills are very, very good because C1 I would consider to be an extremely proficient speaker of English. But let's imagine that your accent is very, very strong. And so it's very difficult for the other person to understand you. However, your grammar is perfect and everything else it still makes it quite difficult. 
Let's try to quantify this a little bit to kind of explain the idea. If we imagine that we have five different areas, just as a, as a random number I've plucked out of the air, we have five different areas and I use something incorrectly which puts one area at 99% and all of the others at 100. That means that overall when you average them all together it's basically like 99 point, I don't know, 8. Something like that. So overall the impression between 99.8 and 100 is next to nothing. No one is really going to notice the difference. However, if you have 2% less on all five of those skills, suddenly that's going to add up and the, the difference is going to be much, much clearer. And so the more you can do to make your skills match what the other person is expecting, the easier it is for them to understand and the less they will notice that you are a student or notice your skills are not maybe perfect. And what you will also notice is once you start reaching a higher level, the upper intermediate, the advanced level, when you use things correctly, it's not that people will suddenly be like, oh my god, you use all your tenses so accurately, it just sounds so good. Actually, it's the opposite. People won't even notice that you're doing it correctly because it just sounds natural. It sounds like what they expect you to say. Think about somebody in your native language. Would you congratulate them for choosing the correct verb that you expect them to use? Y you wouldn't. And the more advanced your English gets, the more you want to be matching their expectations of the words you would choose in certain contexts, the collocations, the phrasal verbs, all that kind of stuff, because that's what will make it so that there's no red flags, there's nothing that suddenly happens and it makes them go, oh, that was unexpected, that was a little bit strange, because all of those little moments where something isn't exactly what they expect, or it's not very natural, or it's the wrong word, or it's not exactly what you're trying to say, it makes it more difficult for the other person, but it just increases the sort of discomfort level, if you like. And all you want to be doing is making that easier and smoother, so actually no one even notices. And grammar is one of the best ways of doing that, because it's a formula. In most cases there is some type of logic or formula that's used to apply this particular structure in your conversation. It doesn't always make it that easy knowing that there's a logic, but usually there is. And especially when we talk about tenses, the logic may be completely different to your native language, but it doesn't mean there isn't one. Most of the time there will be a specific logic and a reason why we say things in a particular way. As a teacher, I know it's also very frustrating when the answer is just, it is because it is. But even in that context, most native speakers cannot explain why we use a particular tense. They don't know why a structure is the way it is. They just know what sounds natural and what doesn't sound natural. By mimicking that and improving all of your abilities to make that easier, it makes a much better impression of your English, of your skills, and it goes unnoticed, which actually is what you want. Eventually you want people to not even notice that you are a student and to just think, oh well, they speak English and it's just like speaking to any other native speaker. So the next time you're sitting there studying your grammar book or you're in a lesson and someone corrects you and tells you that you're saying something in the wrong way or that you notice your pronunciation is just a little bit off, always try and remember that the reason you're doing all these little things isn't just a waste of time. Just because it doesn't make somebody understand you better, just because you're still communicating exactly the same idea, you're not increasing the accuracy, maybe you're not increasing the precision, you're not giving extra details, but the more you can do to improve the way you say things, how you say things, especially once you start reaching those higher levels, it's really going to have a massive impact on how easily you can express yourself, how easily you're understood, and how easily people will have conversations with you. And also while we're talking grammar, I had a lesson recently where a student had been reviewing Present Perfect. And a side note to my side note, whenever I use grammar terms or whenever you see somebody using grammar, grammatical terms in an English video, don't worry about memorising them. 
The reason I use them in my videos and my lessons is so that you are able to find them in future if you wanted to do extra research or you want to know what to ask about. But if you don't remember the names of the tenses or specific types of words and stuff like that, it really doesn't actually matter. The most important thing and the thing you need to focus on most is actually improving the way you say things and understanding how and why we do things. If you don't remember whether it's present perfect or past continuous, it actually doesn't really matter. So don't get your knickers in a twist about it, don't get worked up, just relax and just focus on trying to understand why and how we do what we do. And so back to my side note, I was talking to a student, I was working with a student who had been reviewing Present Perfect, and they'd been doing it by finding videos from films and from TV, and finding examples of Present Perfect, and then trying to understand why they were used in that context, and then also some examples where they believed it should be Present Perfect and it wasn't. And this was really interesting because then they started to identify certain cases where grammatically it should have been Present Perfect, but it actually wasn't. And it turns out it was because in certain American regional dialects and groups of people, they actually use it in a non-grammatical way. So actually, technically it's incorrect, but that's just the way everyone uses it in that particular group or in that particular area. And this is where I think it then gets even more complicated because you open your textbook and it says 100%, you must say it this way, and then you hear native speakers not saying it correctly. And that's where I think the biggest problem comes when you get to the point where you have to make a decision and say, do I just do it 100% perfectly, but then it's not what the native speaker says, and maybe that's not natural. Maybe I shouldn't be using it that way. And you start to question yourself because you always take native speakers as experts. Then you start to think, well, I mustn't know the rules correctly because if I did, then I would be using it the same way they do. Or you know that it's grammatically incorrect, but that's the way those particular people use it. So then you think, do you need to copy that? Are there situations where you can't copy it? And it starts to get really, really complicated. And in this idea, there's also the same thing about regional accents and pronunciation and that kind of thing. I don't think it's necessary to mimic everything that you hear. The main important thing is that you are clear and understandable. So there will be certain phrases that you could copy that are not 100% grammatically correct, and it doesn't really matter so much. Like with slang, people will just understand you because that's what everyone says. However, there will be certain regional accents which are very, very difficult even for native speakers to understand. There will be certain slang and phrases which actually sound very bad to a native speaker. They maybe sound less educated or less polite. And those type of things are very difficult to identify as a student, the same as swearing and rude words. They're very difficult to identify the subtle differences between them because it's sometimes an intrinsic cultural thing and it's not something that's so easily explained or you can't identify it from the dictionary. So my advice would be, if you're not sure, stick to the grammatical rules and the logic and remove any exceptions or any examples where you hear people using it incorrectly. Because when you're communicating, you want to make the process of identifying which phrases and pronunciation to use as simple as possible. So if you learn a rule and there's one exception, understanding that exception when you're listening is amazing. You need to do that. So when you're hearing slang and phrasal verbs and different accents, you need to understand them but you don't have to copy them. What you can do is remove any of those exceptions and then focus entirely on the simplest and the easiest logic to use. And then once you feel 100% confident with those, the other ones will just start naturally appearing if they are common enough that you remember them. And to wrap up this whole discussion, this whole subject, my advice for you as a native speaker, as a language learner, and as a teacher is... Everything is important, but you don't want to spend forever focusing on just one area. You need to kind of work on everything all at the same time. If you really want to sound like a native British speaker and have a perfect Brit British accent, you can do that. But that will be to the detriment of other skills. Also, it's important to remember with language that sometimes the phrases that are used, even when they are slang, 
because they are used by a certain group of people, sometimes the impression of you when you say them actually could be very different. A good example of this is phrases that are used by teenagers. Teenagers aren't known for having the best control of the English language. They tend to say things in a grammatically incorrect way. And when you hear it, it sounds very juvenile. It sounds very underdeveloped. And when there are adults that speak like that, it sounds very childish. You don't really always have the best impression of people who speak like that because actually you expect them once you become an adult that you speak in a slightly different way. And whether that is a correct impression or not, it is something you want to think about the same way you would think about it in your native language. So if there's a particular group of people or a particular area where they use particular slang, you don't want to always just mimic it exactly because maybe that's not the impression you want to give. A good example of things that I don't always recommend that you need to mimic is when you hear things like gonna, woulda, coulda, shoulda, those type of abbreviated expressions. Everyone tries to learn them because they are very natural in spoken English, especially in joint speech. I think sometimes when a student learns them and the pronunciation and intonation isn't perfect, it actually sounds worse or it sounds less advanced and less controlled than if they just said the original phrase. So my advice here for that is you need to be able to understand what somebody says when they say, oh, I want to go. But when you're going to copy it, unless you can copy it accurately and it doesn't cause confusion and it's clear, it's actually always going to be better to say, I'm going to go, I want to go. And it doesn't sound less advanced to do it that way. It's not like there is the natural version and then there's the textbook version. It's more about can you mimic those natural expressions, the rhythm, the intonation well enough that it doesn't then just highlight other areas where you maybe are not 100% perfect. If you say a particular phrase and it just highlights that you're struggling with the pronunciation, it just makes it sound like you're a less advanced English speaker, which isn't really what you want. So sometimes avoiding some of those natural expressions can actually work in your favour and make your English sound much cleaner and much more advanced. All in all, the whole idea is about communication and understanding. So don't worry too much if you don't say everything perfectly. I don't think there's ever a stage where you should really be focused on needing everything to be 100% correct. But just try and understand that in every conversation, there's always an opportunity to grow and to develop. And as long as you're doing that, you will always be better tomorrow than you are today. And that's really all that anyone can ask. And the fact that you're watching these videos means you're passionate about your English. And that's what I like to hear. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Do you think it's really important that you memorize all the grammar perfectly, that your pronunciation is 100% accurate, or you don't really care and you just want people to understand what you're saying and just move on. Let me know in the comments what you think and I can't wait to hear your opinions. That's it for another episode, so have a fantastic week, have a great day learning English, and I look forward to speaking to you very soon. <laughs>